Hello, Leiden. Hey, hello, Leiden. Good evening, Leiden. Hello, Leiden. Hello, Leiden. Hello, Leiden. Bonjour, Leiden. Hello, Leiden. Marhaba, Leiden. Ciao, Leiden. Hi, Puday, Leiden. Hello, Leiden, and welcome to the newest episode of our English-speaking weekly show. As you know, our show is about stories, stories of the international community living in Leiden. Today, we have two fantastic guests in our studio. We have Barbara Gifkapa from France, and we have uh, Aaron Pereira from UK. Hello and welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, we have basically a tradition of a couple of items. First, we usually start from introduction. Why don't we start from you, Barbara? Can you introduce yourself? Who's Barbara? So, um, I am a French person. <laughs> French person. Uh, I arrived in Leiden three, three years ago to study. Previously to that, I was living in Nantes, which is by the sea. Mm -hmm. um, I was in an international high school, decided to continue my studies in, in English. Uh, so I arrived in Leiden and I studied art history for three years. I just graduated recently. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, two years ago, I started working for the Film Festival Leiden Shorts, uh, which happens at Kike House every year, technically in May, due to COVID now in September. We don't really know for next year yet. And, uh, and yeah, I, I work as a programmer. Uh, there, uh, selecting the films, etc., and in communication, taking care of newsletters, social media, etc. And I'm starting my master's in film studies at uh, Amsterdam in Amsterdam next Tuesday. Wow! Actually. Well, good luck with that too. Thank you. <laughs> nice to have you. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you. What about you, Aaron? Why don't you introduce yourself? Well, I guess I'm Aaron. I came to the Netherlands two and a half years ago. Uh, previous to that, I was living in Germany and a few other places. I came for work. I'm an engineer for the German Aerospace Center, working at the European Space Agency. Uh, but since I, I came to Leiden, I also got involved in environmental activism and also uh, community volunteering. So I work also now for the Leiden Migranten, Leiden Migrant Help Desk. And we have a program where we, um, we help kids uh, feel at home in the Dutch school system by tutoring and other things. You introduce yourself fully. Now I have done. Now <laughs> I don't have any questions. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, it's okay. Uh, nice to have you here. Um, by the way, you are the second um, uh, employee of the European Space Agency that has been in our show. Oh right. Yeah. Great. So, uh, we have asked you to bring us little items that have um, sentimental value for you. Um, why don't we start from you, Barbara? Yeah. What did you bring us? So, I brought a book. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, it's called Les Fourmonnayeurs, The Contrafeders in English, I believe, by André Gide. And it's a book that I had to read in high school, um, in my last year of high school, so I was even 17 at the time. And uh, it's a very odd novel because it, it is not linear in any way. There's a plethora of characters, and one of the central theme is being queer. But it's set in early the early 20th century in France. Wow! So obviously, no fun. And um, yeah, it, it mixes like um, in terms of religion and family and class, sexuality, gender. It, it's a very complex and layered uh, book. And yeah, I really love it and I really love the object in itself because it, it has all my annotations from yeah. high school and it's interesting I'd like to go back to them and realize that I have completely changed and my little comments <laughs> are now very obsolete but yeah it's, it's something I hold very close to my heart. That's fascinating uh, I, I will never be able to pronounce that but uh, sure. looks like a really interesting book. What about you Aaron? What did you bring us? I bought a pitch pipe. Wow. So um, it gives you any of the tones. I think uh, there are 13 tones here, so we'll see you get twice. Uh, but I used it quite a lot uh, in Germany, where I was singing, well, in an a cappella group, actually in two. Wow. And um, sometimes we would sing at Christmas, we would sing on the streets. It always hangs around in my backpack. So I thought, so cool. I don't have any good reason for it to be in my backpack, so it has to be of sentimental value. I guess so. Can you show us? Yeah, so it's, uh, I mean, if you need a C-sharp. Okay. And then you have a C-sharp. And then you need an F. 
you have an app. So cool. It's, it's so nice. easy to uh, just roll it around and then you have different tunes. Exactly. It's super handy. You are into music, aren't you? Yeah, I'm a singer as well. Wow. All right. Yeah, I went to the conservatory in high school. As, but it was more modern, modern music and interpretation, composition. And we've got like a band formation where like usually two guitars, a bass guitar, um, drums, maybe a, a synth. And I was the lead singer. Um, we have made a little profile to make you a bit more comfortable, uh, uncomfortable after five years again. <laughs> Um, to hear with his questions. Let's see, where did you take us, Barbara? Hello, Barbara. Extremely busy with light and shorts just around the corner. Yes. Okay, coming in. So this is Kai House. This is the cinema and light at which we do the Light or Short Festival, which is from the 2nd till the 5th of September 2021, so last weekend. This is quite a posh place to be a cinema. It looks good, right? Okay. How many <laughs> guests are you expecting on uh, hopefully around 2,000 people. Okay. And how many shorts? We're screening 107 and 18 shorts this year. Different. Okay. Uh, is there anywhere we can see the program somewhere displayed? Yes, or you can just check out our website, lightershorts.nl, or you can also go on the cinema website and directly book your tickets over there. You can also get passes, many options. That's quite interesting. <laughs> this are is we, the office. Are we, are we here at the Academy of Motion Pictures? Because I can see a huge Oscar. <laughs> Whose Oscar is this? No one's, no one's. This is Michelle, our head programmer at Light and Short. So Barbara, uh, Light and Shorts. Um, just give us a history about Light and Shorts. What is it? Uh, Light and Shorts was created uh, 13 years ago now and it used to be a cinema club done by students from the Masters in Film Studies in, uh, in Leida and throughout time it, it grew bigger and bigger and so four years ago it joined the cinema here at Kike House and now it is a yearly festival which originally was in May and with COVID has been moved around to September uh, so it's a fourth edition here in Kai House, and we screen sessions, uh, short film sessions that we curate throughout the year, which are usually between 80, yeah, 80 minutes, more, more or less, um, curated thematically. Uh, and we also organize side events depending on the theme that we decide um, upon during, during the year. And so this year's uh, theme is Dutch Multicultural Society, and we have organized four events and one workshop, uh, one animation workshop on that theme, and then three panel discussions, which are about institutions, about media, about, um, about grassroots movements, and an online exhibition, which uh, also tackles those issues through the lens of academia and artists. So how you, Barbara, got involved with Light and Shorts? I started working here two years ago as a reviewer. So basically when we receive all those short films, we need people to kind of watch them and give their opinion so we can do a pre-selection. So I started as a reviewer and after a couple of months, I decided to also get involved in the side events. So I started working there and then let's say that I got so involved that I started uh, doing more and now I'm both in the programming team, so the selection and the curation and the communication team, which is all about the newsletter, the social media, making sure people know about us, so. Nice, nice profile. Thank you. It's, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. <laughs> I felt far more, I, mean, I move my hands far too much. What is this stuff? But <laughs> I didn't say anything stupid, I'm very glad. I hear God so excited to see the office. You, yeah. could, you could tell he was fascinated. Such a mess, I live even more a mess right now. Lovely. That, well, that was the only summer we got in the Netherlands, so <laughs> people wanted to <laughs> at least experience it a little yeah. bit. And despite that, we still got people in the room, so that was nice. That was That's nice. amazing. Um, can people still watch those um, shorts on the website? Or um, Sadly, not this selection. Uh, what we had started doing last year, and I hope we will continue this year, was that we, wrote that we had a team of writers writing mostly weekly articles based on shorts that we screened in the past that are available online. Okay. And so we have a page on our website called Rewatch, Reread, on which we have those articles paired with, with, those, uh, with those shorts. And I really hope that some of the shorts that we screened this year will be available online at some point for a little while so that we can also advertise them again on our website 
or maybe at some point organize a, a retrospective. We always wish for that. It never happens. Well, wow, online we, viewing would be also nice. We, we, let's say we were thinking about those things. Are they going to happen? We don't really know. I hope so, because okay. I would love to watch all of them as well, because I used all of them. <laughs> um, Aaron, let's see where did you take us. This is the community garden. In, uh, What's the name of this? Marudak Beard. It's uh, just a beard town, community garden. Okay. It's where I first met people when I came to Leiden. Oh, good. So you have an uh, interest for gardening? Well, I didn't before, but uh, after that I did. <laughs> I can see, I can see some grapes. grapes? Yeah, there's mm. stuff here. Tasty. So anyone can wow, come that's in. quite a small urban jungle. Indeed. Towards anyone your right. Come in from the uh, from the community and uh, pick the herbs. We have a lot of things going on. So bay, yeah. rosemary, you can see um, lemon melon. So how did you end up in Leiden? I uh, came here for my job, actually. I um, I was working in Germany mm -hmm. and uh, I wasn't, I was really happy with the job, but I wanted to move to a different country mm. to see a bit more of the world. And um, yeah, it turned out that my boss had an open position in the Netherlands. And uh, long story short, I came here. So where are you from? You look quite a mix. Yeah, I'm uh, originally from the UK. I, well, I was. I was born in India and I grew up in the UK. So, uh, Where you were born in India? I was born in Bombay. Oh, Mumbai. Mumbai. Now, Bombay, back, of course. Bombay Come on. Then, yeah, Bombay, uh, Bombay. I was born there. Um, and uh, I moved to England with my parents when I was very young. Mm -hmm. So uh, I spent most of my, all of my childhood uh, in England. And then I studied abroad in the US and I uh, took an internship in Germany. I then uh, took a PhD position in Germany and uh, kept on working mm -hmm. and then in moved here two and a half years ago. Oh God, another cat. <laughs> Me and cats go very long in this program. So oh, right. I just have to show it. Well, this one comes in every now and then. And we have also some ducks, which co uh, like to hang mm. out over there. Okay. Um, as well as in the canal over here. Yeah, there's some water. Yes, I can yeah. see. And this is, uh, this is what I'm going to be doing later today, cutting down all these reeds oh, good. Uh, together with Vim. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of wildlife here. If you come here in the early mornings, you can see a lot of things going on, all the water birds. And what do you do apart from your routine job? Well, um, I'm actually four days a week at my job. I cut down uh, because I also volunteer at the Leiden Support Desk for Migrants. Mm -hmm. So we um, started in January 2020. And uh, it's an organization that has many, many different projects, um, mostly helping migrants in Leiden. And the project that I'm involved with and helped set up was uh, the project on the Weisbruch or, or Learning Bridges. It's where we uh, teach or give um, tutoring to kids between 12 and 17 uh, from a migrant background. Uh, who've maybe had to deal with a language barrier at school or a different school system to the one that they grew up in. Um, and basically we try and give them a little bit of encouragement and also tutoring and help them feel at home in the Dutch school system. So when you're free, apart from this place, where, do you, where else do you go? And where else especially you go to eat out? Ooh, eating out? That's a good question. I hadn't thought about that. I usually cook for myself, mm -hmm. mostly. Um, Any Freiplatz, good vegan place? Yeah, the Freiplatz has a good uh, vegan eight cafe, which has recently started up. And the Leise Sternlocker is also doing a eight cafe in um, the Freiplatz on the Thursdays. Uh, so there's on Saturdays and Thursdays something. Uh, there used to be another uh, eight cafe at the Onsporing in um, Wednesday, but I'm not sure if that's uh, if that's going on since Corona. But just basically places where eight cafes like this where people come together. You don't know anybody necessarily, but uh, you can sit at the table with people and um, get to know different people. So I really like that. And an inexpensive meal as well. So uh, top favorite beer here locally? I, you'd have to go to the Staatsbräuhaus. That's uh, just across the river from here. I don't know which favorite beer is, but all of their beers are really good. Uh, a bit expensive, but uh, worth it.
Nice tips. Yeah, well, I was not expecting that question. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been out for a beer for a long time. I mean, Corona, right? Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. Um, is there any particular reason why the, um, the festival this year was called the Dutch Multicultural Society? Um, so, last year, the year previous to that, we had as a theme uh, climate justice slash injustice. Mm. But the, we really wanted to focus more on the people than just on climate change, because I feel like a lot of people are aware of climate change. It's, it's becoming, I mean, governments are doing very little about it, but like, it's, it's something that we've learned about growing up, etc. Mm. But we have yet to learn about um, the consequences this has on people, and because we are in Europe and very privileged, we have a tendency to forget that a lot of places around the world are suffering far more than, than we are. And so it was kind of what started last year, and we were like, okay, now that we are making themes that are about subjects that to us are politi politically significant, but also culturally significant, socially significant, we have to keep going in this direction. And so when um, last year um, the uh, BLM movement um, mm -hmm. had to come, let's say, start again all its work uh, even more intensively than before, and then with the growing hate towards uh, Asian people due to COVID, we're, we're like, we need to tackle those, yeah. those issues. Uh, and maybe in a more local way, maybe maybe by you focusing on the on the Netherlands, so people could actually understand what it means also here, because most of the debate was happening in the U.S. And we're like, maybe we should focus on here and see what's happening, what the communities um, have to say here about racism here and uh, or, or religious biases, etc. In this country. That's a really good yeah. point because also I noticed by the Black Lives Matter process last year, a lot of it was. Uh, about the, the situation in the US and people didn't want to think about what was happening in the UK whereas uh, so in, in, in the Netherlands whereas um, you have also police killing uh, black people here mm -hmm. Tommy Holton for example um, but people know about George Floyd they don't know about Tommy Holton I wish I don't know if festival could uh, compile all those subjects and submit it to the Leiden municipality mm -hmm. for further work because uh, not everyone usually talks about uh, multiculturalism. I mean, yes, Biden is inclusive and all of that, uh, obviously. But then when it comes to actually diving deeper into um, surfacing the problems, then, you know, uh, maybe it's even done within um, the policymakers' table and surrounding, but not really uh, with the... Um, uh, with the participation of the experts, it's, it would be really interesting to see uh, what kind of follow up the Leiden Short is planning to have yeah. on this subject. Mm -hmm. uh, Erin, yeah. you're actually tackling um, migrant education issue. Uh, That's true, but I mean, uh, following from your last ah, point sure. about uh, um, yeah, the issue of multiculturalism yeah. in, in Leiden and um, attitudes with migrants, there is research being done at Leiden University uh, towards that. So. Um, I think it was uh, Friday the 3rd mm -hmm. of September, there was a presentation by um, Marcia van der Wouda and, oh, you know it. Well, we did the, an exhibition for like the first, ah, okay. the exhibition, she is the academic ah, okay. person who... Well, yes, from her and uh, her, um, I don't know, postdoc, maybe, um, Nanu van Eersel? Yeah. Yes. Um, so the, they gave a, a, a talk about their research on the attitudes within Leiden towards uh, migrants. And um, yeah, it's, it's really where, interesting. Where were some highlights that you remember? Well, yeah, now I have to think back to the presentation. Um, yeah, it's, it's not as, we're not as welcoming as we like to think, for example. Um, migrants face a lot of uh, hurdles mm. from within uh, well, bureaucracy also, but then also Dutch society. Um, hmm. I have to think about that one. Was there anything that really touched you? That yeah. Um, well, for me, always, this is not related to the, um, to, to, the, the, to, the to the research itself, but I see there is a 
a difference between migrants and expats and, and Dutch people as well. So, I mean, um, migrants is always associated with uh, criminality and bad things. Expats are associated with the, the benefits that, uh, that migrants bring. So, expats are the good side of migrants, and mm. yeah, migrants are the bad side of the expats. It, it really bugs me this uh, this dichotomy. Unbelievable. And mm. um, I mean, what was in the first place that motivated you to work for the front desk um, at the migrant support center? But, so it's a, a it's a Latin migrant help desk. We do. Okay. Um, but where is it based? We're not actually. Well, we're not based out of anywhere okay. particular. So we started in. <laughs> Uh, a year and a half ago. It's been quite hard to get a fixed place. We're operating actually out of the um, Dorbach head mm -hmm. office. Dorbach is a, um, an anti-capitalist, anti-racist um, workers' rights organization. Nice. Um, I hope I do them justice by that um, description because they're a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. But they work, um, they operate in the Flagplatz and at the beginning they, um, they lent us their room. Um, later we have um, some of the other rooms from, um, yeah, from the Birthauser, so the community house, uh, yeah. areas, How centers. Um, so we operate out of those at the moment, so we don't have a, a, sp a particular place. We have the projects, though, and they happen everywhere. So um, what kind of activism work have you guys been involved in? I don't know if there's any. I mean, I know you are uh, doing a lot of volunteering work, but specifically um, addressing you know those uh, uh, issues that we are facing in the world. Are you engaged in uh, in any other organizations or yeah. campaigns? Yeah. Well, um, I'm working with XR Extinction Rebellion, and we have a presence in Leiden. Actually, last year we were quite active with a campaign uh, focused on the Boerhaave Museum, which is just opposite where you work. Uh, because they they take funding from Shell, um, Shell is their main sponsor. They had last year a uh, member of, the, of their um, board of trustees who was actually a climate change denier, which is incredible for a science museum. Um, they devote a large part of their um, exhibits to Shell without being critical about it in any way. It's just a sort of um, song of praise of Shell, essentially. And they have... Um, in an area where they have videos of Nobel Prize winners. There's also um, is it Marianne von Loon, Marianne von Loon, who was a former president director of Shell, uh, talking about how great it is to work at Shell and uh, the opportunities for chemical engineers and, and this kind of thing, which is um, very, very disappointing from a science museum which kids go to. Furthermore, they're involved in the greenwashing festival Generation Discover, mm -hmm. I think, which has come under fire by... Um, among others, fossil-free culture and uh, fossil-free fossil fossil on device, um, an organization trying to get fossil fuels out of people's teaching. Part of Shell Must Fall, which is a big campaign nationwide, in fact, international. And yeah, you know about this as well. Yeah, yeah of course, when, when we were, so as I was saying, the, the, the theme of the, your previous climate injustice, that mm -hmm. was one of the things that, that we really wanted to tackle and mention again that's about people, it's about corporation, and it's far more than just, it's getting hot outside, you know, and there was really one of the things that we were thinking about, and we screened actually shorts about the consequences of those sorts of fuel and uh, industries, etc., on, yeah. on the people, really on the people and on the land. Was a campaign calling for the fall of Shell, or more like stop the funding um, that comes to the uh, Boerhaven Museum? So, um, locally the campaign was uh, targeted at the Boerhaven Museum. Nationally, Shell Must Fall is calling for the dismantling of Shell, the transition to um, a clean economy and uh, jobs for the workers, so retraining the workers. For solar energy, for, for alternative anything else, fuel. yeah. Um, those are just a few of its demands, but that's... But what was the museum's reaction? I mean, was there any reaction? Yeah, the museum invited uh, two people, so... Um, two people? Yeah. Well, they invited two people for a, for a talk with okay. the museum's directors. Uh, one was uh, Femke Slagos from um, Fossil Free Culture... Fossil Free On The Rise, sorry. And uh, one was um, my colleague from XR, Extinction Rebellion, sorry. And... Uh, they didn't promise anything. They said that Hein Willems, who was the um, member of the Board of Trustees, who was a climate denier, was going to leave 
but then he would be replaced by I think someone from Unilever. And um, you know, these are also this is also a company with its roots in colonialism, which is not much better. Um, so essentially, nothing has happened really. Sad. Yet. I think, um, generally speaking, um, corporate uh, world needs to rethink um, their targets. They need to rethink how they are affecting the world. Um, by doing just a simple charity is not enough anymore, so mm. the world is in crisis. So, by, yeah, like, uh, kind of uh, showing this is an impressive project that we do, you know, working with this charity, with that organization that doesn't cut anymore no, uh, in a world that is turning upside down. I absolutely agree that um, uh, in this kind of a condition we don't have um, to do um, encouragement anymore, it's more crisis time, we need to scream. And we need to call out the people who are responsible for the crisis. Yeah. So I think that's um, what you did really well then last year. Um, sharing film festivals, yeah. getting people involved. And yeah, trying to yeah. show basically the underrepresented narratives of this issues. And again this year, with our theme again this year, yeah. it was showing all those narratives of people that suffer or from climate change or from racism or for religious biases and that show what what they think and how they feel about all this because I mean they are the person uh, that are really yeah targeted by these issues and they need to be able to tell their stories yeah absolutely and we need more mediums who can share their stories um, um, or up in the open so to speak mm -hmm. without political uh, speaking um, well um, Favorite Leidener, that has become our one of the really interesting endings for our show lately. Uh, why don't you, Barbara, share with us who is your favorite Leidener, if you have any? Oh, my, my favorite. It was a very hard question. Yeah, it is. And so I, I picked uh, Dr. Laura Burton. She was my professor in first and second year at university. And uh, she um, introduced a lot of Let's say that it, growing up in a high school, I had a lot of, I was politically very aware of what was going on, but I didn't necessarily have the words. I, mm -hmm. I couldn't find the words. The concepts were very blurry. I didn't really know where to get from there. And in first year, she had a course called Representation. And it was the first time in that course that she basically explained all those concepts in such an interesting and simple way. I finally felt, oh, okay, all of this makes sense. It's going to be all right. <laughs> Amazing. I hope she hears that. I hope that too. Thank you. What about you, Aaron? Who is your favorite Latiner? Yeah, this is also a really hard question <laughs> because so I've got to know so many, you know, great people here. Um, so I actually wants to pick a couple, and um, that's uh, Hive and Edis. Um, they were the fir some of the first people I met, and he offered to help me with my Dutch because at that time it was still atrocious. So um, I got to know Leiden um, from cafes and, and walks with, uh, with Harb and, um, and Iris also. We went to concerts uh, together. So they really showed me the city. So uh, I'm really grateful to them for yeah, introducing me to this and to, uh, and to Leiden. That is amazing. Thank you for sharing. And hopefully, you know, there are people in the viewership who would like to uh, go to that kind of establishment and feel free. They can do so. Absolutely. Well, that's the end of another beautiful episode of Hello Leiden um, with all these interesting guests and interesting stories, never ending process of reflections. Um, we will see you um, another week uh, on another evening. Um, that's the end, folks. Uh, if you are a foreigner living in Leiden and if you have a story to share, just like Aaron and Barbara did, please do email us at hello leiden at slotostart.nl. Uh, we are everywhere. You can miss us Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're trying at least. Um, do get in touch. Do like, do share, do comment because only based on your comments we can improve ourselves. Have a good night. Hello, Leiden. Hello, Leiden. Good Leiden. Hello, Leiden. Bonjour, Leiden. Hello, Leiden. Marhaba, Leiden. Ciao, Leiden. Hi, Podai, Leiden.